Library of Adventure, featuring the great adventures of yesterday, dramatized for the boys and girls of today. Michael Strogoff, Courier of the Tsar. Chapter 5 of the story, adapted from the novel by Jules Verne. The river steamer Caucasus left Kazan for Perm with its assorted freight of human lives. And of them all, the most watchful, most silent, was Michael Strogoff, travelling in his guise of the merchant Korpanov. On the 19th of July, the vessel reached Perm, and immediately Michael set out to find some conveyance which would take him on towards his destination. He dare not delay, for every hour meant some advance by the Tatar hordes towards Irkutsk and he must reach the Grand Duke before the traitor, Ivan Ogarev. Nicholas, have you been in this town before? I have, Nadia. Marble, salt, coal and gold are worked in the province. It's an important town, and yet there are no conveniences. I hope to find either a telga or a tarantas to carry us. Will that be difficult? I cannot say. Travellers coming in from the steppes sell their vehicles here before they take the steamer, and those following our route buy to take them across the steppes. Of course, there is the mail carriage, but that's been discontinued for the time being. We could have gone with the mails. No, I prefer to buy a vehicle and stimulate the zeal of the driver with a few tips. Come along, sister, we cannot delay. And there'll be many others looking for means of conveyance across the steps. Well, we have it. A talent hats. The only one left in the whole of Perth. <laughs> you haggled over the price long enough, brother. And yet, you sounded as if you were unused to such long-winded bargaining. You did not sound like a merchant. <laughs> Perhaps I have grown lazy. Mm, it doesn't look a very comfortable vehicle. It isn't. No springs, but it's solid and will stand the rough roads. You see, there are splashboards to protect us from mud and a leather hood to keep out either sun or rain. Uh, I wish I could have found a more comfortable conveyance for you. I would have gone on foot, if need be, to rejoin my father. I don't doubt your courage, Nadia. But the journey ahead is going to test us. There'll be physical fatigues to endure that will... I shall endure them, whatever they may be. If you ever hear a complaint from my lips, then you may leave and continue your journey alone. I know you'll... There we are, my husband. Ah, the post driver with his team. Uh, come on, my pets. Oh, way there. Oh, there. Three horses. One is harnessed in Come to the on, long please. shafts there, the others to the side. Yeah. We'll need all their strength, Nadia. No, Nicholas Kopanov. I am he. Harness your horses quickly, driver. We must leave immediately. Uh, travelers are always in a hurry. Any luggage? None besides that which we carry. Huh. Crows at six kopecks a mile. No, eagles at nine kopecks a mile. With a tip beside. Oh, brother, well, that's a different matter. <laughs> Come on, my honey, dear off there. Dear off there, my new pains. What did he oh, mean, Nicholas? Yeah. Crows, he said. I understand their slang. A crow is a poor passenger who pays poorly. An eagle is, well, the opposite. You'll find that the imperial bird flies much more rapidly. Well, we're ready, Mr. Corporal. Uh, put up the hood. The sun is hot for my sister. Oh, good. Are you all ready? Drive on. Come on now. Come on, my beauties. Come on there. My little pigeons, my doves, my pretty swallows. Fly now, you eagles. Fly! Calculated that there are about 200 miles between Firm and Ekaterinburg, Nicholas. Am I right? Yes. And when we reach Ekaterinburg, we shall be at the foot of the Ural Mountains, on the opposite side to this. How long will it take to get across the mountains? In 48 hours. But we'll travel day and night. I say day and night because that is how I must go. I cannot risk until I reach Irkutsk. 
I shall not delay you. If the Tartar invasion has left the road open, we shall arrive in 20 days. It is well that you know the road. How often have you made the journey? Many times. Had it been winter, we might have made better time, I expect. Yes, on sleds across the ice. But frost and snow would have been hard for you to bear. What matter? Winter is the friend of Russia. Yes, Nadia. But what strength of mind and body is needed to endure that friendship? I've seen the temperature in the Siberian steppes fall to more than 40 degrees below freezing point. In spite of my reindeer coat, I felt my heart growing chill, my limbs stiffening, my feet freezing in triple woolen socks. Oh, such cold. I've seen my sleigh horses covered with a coating of ice, their breath congealed at their nostrils. My flask froze, and even a knife could make no impression on the brandy in it. But the sleigh flew like the wind. Imagine the plain, white and level, farther than the eye could reach. No rivers to cross at doubtful fords, no lakes to be crossed in boats. Hard ice everywhere. The route open, the road sure. But at what price of suffering, those alone could say, have never returned, but whose bodies lie lapped in snow on some bleak shore. But you have returned, brother. Yes, I'm a Siberian. And because my father was a hunter and took me everywhere with him, I became inured to hardship. I've told you of these things because... because I couldn't have borne to see you set out across the steps in wintertime. How many times have you crossed the steps in winter? Three. Each time to see my mother in Omsk. She was expecting me. And I am going to Irkutsk, where my father is expecting me. I am taking him my mother's last words. I mean by that, nothing would have prevented me from making this journey. You're a brave girl, Nadia. God himself would have led you. the horses, brother? I have. This merchant fellow drives us on as if the devil were behind him. Huh. Maybe he is, for all I know. Who is he? Nicholas Korpanov, merchant, bound for Irkutsk. There's something about him I don't understand. I've met hundreds of merchants, and if that fellow's a merchant, I'll drag the Tarantas to Ekaterinburg myself. Are these papers in order? They are, in perfect order. Tell me this, little brother. Why should he have papers authorizing him to use government horses to go beyond the frontier? No Russian to leave the provinces. That was the order. And yet this fellow has papers dated even before the order was made by the government. Ah, oh, no matter. He pays well. Your job is to provide horses at the post. Mine is to drive them. Huh. Why should we worry about it? Perhaps he's a political refugee getting out before the storm breaks. Nicholas Korpanov, merchant, and his sister. That's what he says, brother. And as far as I'm concerned, that's enough. Nine kopecks a mile, with a good tip at every posting house. Huh. I should worry. Are the horses ready, driver? Oh, yes, Mr. Korpanov. But we haven't eaten yet. I've arranged for provisions to be taken with us. We must start immediately. Tell me, Postmaster, are there any vehicles ahead of us? Yes, a Tolga carrying two men. They seem to be in as great a hurry as you. Hmm. Eagles, eh? Eagles indeed, brother. Let us begin immediately. Nadia, we're leaving. No, Michael. I was dozing, I think. Poor little sister. You're very tired. No. Oh, yes. Very tired, Nicholas. See beyond the mist? The mountains. The Urals. And across them lies a Katerinberg. 
And rest? Not for me. <sighs> Will we reach the mountains today? In the late evening, I think. But I must cross them tonight. If we'd made better time, we could have done the journey in daylight. As it is, we have no choice. They look very beautiful in the early sunlight. Yes. Nadia, do you see the slight mist rising from the nearer valleys? Oh, it is pretty. It's a sign of trouble. There'll be a storm tonight. I hope we're not caught in it. Storm in the Urals is not pleasant. The other vehicle is still ahead of us. Yes, whoever they are, they're driving their beasts hard. I'd like to pass them before we reach Ekaterinburg. Perhaps we will tonight. Are the horses ready? Aye. The men in the Telga, have they attempted the night crossing? Aye. An hour ahead. Driver, we leave immediately. And a triple tip if we're in the city by morning. Oh, did you hear that? No matter. If we meet the storm, we can shelter. Come, Nadia. No rain yet and no wind. Driver, at what time will we reach the top of the ridge? One o'clock in the morning. <laughs> If ever we get there at all. Why, this won't be your first storm in the mountain, surely. No, and pray heaven it won't be my last. Are you afraid? No, but I think you were wrong in starting at night. I should have been still more wrong had I stayed. Nicholas, the wind. Oh, look below. The chasm. If we should lose the road. The storm's coming, Nadia. Be ready for anything, and put your life in my hands. So Michael Strogoff and Nadia approached the most dangerous part of the mountain crossing. On one side, the rocky walls of the Urals tower blackly above them, and on the other, the road falls away into bottomless chasms, wherein the thunder rumbles ceaselessly. Can they outride the coming storm? And what of the two men ahead of them? Who are they? And what are they doing on this dangerous stretch of road? Listen again when next we present Michael Strogoff, courier of the Tsar. <laughs> 